Hello and good morning. You're watching The Mining Show brought to you by Blytheway on Core Finance and I'm Charlie Gibson. Now, the last time this particular company was a guest of mine, I said that their shares had gone up by one pound in the space of about six months and uh, I said if you're an American, you could do the math. And uh, now, so as not to make a liar out of me, I'm pleased to report that they've gone up another pound, so they've gone up two pounds in the, in the space of the last, well, probably seven months in this particular case, but um, depending on how you want to look at it, they might have actually gone up by more than that in a shorter period of time. Anyway, I won't let you do that. In fact, I will let you do the math in this particular occasion as well, but what I will do for you is I will introduce the company, which is Caledonia Mine, and joining me today uh, from Caledonia Mining is Steve Curtis, the Chief Executive. Steve, very good morning to Hi, you. Charlie. And also Morris Mason, the uh, Head of Corporate Development and investor relations. Very good morning to you both, uh, gentlemen. Uh, results out yesterday, and uh, shares are looking pretty good. Yes, Charlie. Um, uh, we've we published our Q1 results, and uh, we're very pleased with them. Seasonally, we always uh, have a slower start to the year than uh, than we end a year. So don't compare Q1 to Q4 of last year. Um, we're on target. We we produce what we expected. Uh, costs are in line with uh, with where we want to be. But we benefited from a, a gold price that was higher than we forecast. So that's, uh, that has resulted in a, in a very nice set of results, um, nearly $7 million or just over $7 million of operating cash flow for the quarter, uh, which has enabled us to continue the investment and the expansion at Blanket. And we spent just over $5 million in the quarter. Uh, continuing with the, the project uh, building the central shaft. Just explain that seasonality, because you think of an underground gold mine in Zimbabwe, you, it's not immediately obvious why there should be any seasonality. So what's going on there? Well, probably the major thing uh, that is very different to the market that we're in here in London is uh, we've got public holidays peppered all over the week, and uh, it's not a very disciplined structure around having them on the Monday. So we will have a public holiday on a Thursday and a Tuesday. So guess what happens to the rest of the week? Right. So yeah. you have a you have so a just, lot like, just like America at Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot of uh, unproductive time that could be unproductive, but because we're in a in a mining rural environment, uh, we can get uh, volunteers. But there is just a there is a high level of disruption during uh, the first half of the year in terms of Easter and general public holidays. And uh, we budget that in, and uh, we, we, we take that into account, and, and so we ramp up slowly as the year progresses. There's always this question, isn't there, or we got used to, our, to looking for this in your results. You've got this balance between production and development, haven't you? Now, is, yes. is that still a decision you're having to make on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis? Because I know as you open the mine up, presumably that's, that's something that's going to fall away, and you'll be able to run both of them. But is that still something you're doing, you're choosing between... No. Either, either development or production. No, anyway. Charlie, there's a, that's a very important question because we've still got uh, two years to run before the central shaft is completed. But because we have got the, the shaft down to 990 metres, so we're below the operating level of, of the existing mine. So the engineering teams have designed and they've, they've put in what they call uh, mid-shaft loading. So we are actually using the central shaft to bring out waste from the development. So instead of developing towards the central shaft from our operating shaft being number four shaft, we're developing from central shaft away towards the other areas. And that has taken some pressure off the number four shaft, which is where all the ore has to come out. So we've, we've alleviated uh, some of the bottleneck by somewhere between 120 and 150 tons a day, which now can be dedicated to, to ore. And that's, uh, that's a very comfortable place to be. While we know we can still get the development going and it comes out central shaft, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't jeopardize the, the central shaft project. Um, we do lose effectively a sinking blast per week. But uh, the, the, the project is still on target, it's still on track. We will still have it completed in the time frame that we, we informed the market. And we will still get to the ability to be able to produce the 80,000 ounces by 2021. And I think, Morris, last time we spoke, which is about a month ago, you were talking about your guidance range. And, and I think you were sort of suggesting you were hoping to be towards the top end of it. Presumably after a nice set of results like your first quarter, your, um, your, that, that crystallizes that, that expectation. It, it does. Uh, guidance is still 55 to 59,000 ounces for the year. We're, we're obviously hoping to achieve uh, the, the, the top end of that guidance. And uh, so we're, we're 
likely to stay within that, and if costs stay where they are and the gold price uh, stays where it's been for the last quarter, we'll, we'll have uh, quite a nice cash generation for the year, certainly enough to fund all of the CapEx projects that Steve mentioned, plus some of the exploration activities we're looking at, and maintain the dividend and, and, and keep a healthy balance sheet. And then the, the, the big prize at the end of the day is the, the 80,000 ounces a year, um, so what, that would be 20,000 a quarter. When do we start moving towards that figure? Well, as Morris has said, um, we're targeting uh, between 55 and 59 this quarter. Next uh, year, we'll be just over 60. Uh, the year after that, so that'll be 2020, when the shaft is completed, and we're still just using uh, number four shaft, we'll be up to sort of the mid-60s, 65 to 68,000 ounces. And then the, uh, for the new central shaft will be completed uh, in 2020, uh, equipped, commissioned, and come 2021, we're going to have the ability and no bottleneck at uh, four shafts. So 2021 is the 80,000 ounce. And what's important is um, as, we, as we are going deeper in the mine, generally grades are improving a little bit. We're not expecting grades to shoot the lights out, but the average mine grade will return to around four grams a tonne. And um, the, the tonnages that we are needing to produce at the moment uh, are between sort of 1,500 and 1,650 tons a day. And to achieve 80,000 ounces, we need 1,800, 1,850 tons a day. So we, we're not looking for a massive increase in tonnage. There's a, there's a, a combination of tons and grade. And uh, our, our long hole drilling and our, our deep exploration shows us that the, the, the reserves are there and the resources are there and the, uh, the grade is there, and uh, the infrastructure that we're putting in place with Central Shaft will allow us to handle the tons. So 20,000 uh, 20, ounces a quarter, 80,000 a year in 2021. Um, what's the next thing after that? I, I assume you're doing some exploration work with all of this lovely cash generated to, to move on to the next project. It is that a fair assumption, Morris? Uh, we, we have we've already announced we'll be spending $4 million on satellite properties uh, at, at Blanket. Uh, most of that will be spent this year, and probably all of it will be spent in the next 12-month rolling period. And that is to explore properties that we believe have uh, geological potential within trucking distance of the Blanket plant. So we're, we're fortunate that we have uh, quite substantial excess capacity on the cyanide circuit at Blanket. Uh, upgrading the communition circuit is, is, is very, very simple. So if we are successful in finding satellite feed, uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to, to supplement uh, mine feed on the blanket mine quite, uh, quite, quite easily and for, for, for very low capital investment. So it's important to note we, we are in quite a, an attractive uh, region in terms of the Gwanda Greenstone Belt. Uh, this is a, a major greenstone trend just between us and our neighbours who are three kilometres away down strike. This is a five to six million ounce total endowment over the hundred years that we've been in operation in terms of extracted ounces and known resources. We have good reason to believe that I think six of those properties show uh, some attractive potential and we're allocating four million dollars of capital to that and if the exploration is successful we expect that is likely to result in some satellite feed which we can easily process at the plant. So it's, uh, it's early days, it's exploration, it's uh, always uncertain. Uh, but we, we believe there's, uh, there's good reason to be optimistic. And you're looking at surface or you're looking at depth? Uh, when I say at depth, it, it, is, it would be uh, underground operations, but, but very, very shallow. So, so, so not as deep as you are at Blanket no, at no, the moment? No, nearly as deep, no. I mean, would, would, would they require separate infrastructure, though, to develop? Uh, a separate, is, it, is it another shaft? Uh, it would be other, other mining, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're kilometres away from where we are at the moment, so, so it would be a separate uh, mining infrastructure. But at this stage, very low... Uh, low levels of capex compared to what we're currently spending and again these these would be uh, relatively small levels of satellite feed but if we could get an extra uh, thousand ounces a month uh, two thousand ounces a month from satellite properties over the next few years again this is all dependent on exp exploration success uh, that would be very promising and and low capital not large infrastructure and you've got the mill capacity to do that we have the cyanide circuit capacity to do that we would need extra milling capacity but mills are relatively cheap so it, it would be remiss of me, I think, not to talk about the circumstances in, in Zimbabwe at the moment. A lot of change, a lot of flux. Tell us your impression, first of all, of the new government and how that's affecting you. And I suppose with special reference to indigenisation. 
Yes, Charlie, I think we may, we may have spoken about this before, but it is, it's a very important change that has taken place in Zimbabwe. Um, the, the legislation of indigenization is now on the books, um, and it means for us as a gold miner that uh, we could own 100% of uh, the blanket mine. So we are a fully indigenized operation. We currently own 49%. Um, and uh, optically, we want to uh, buy back a larger shareholding. Um, currently, we're disadvantaged uh, compared to other operators who want to go to markets if they want to raise money. Not that uh, at this point in time we're thinking of raising any cash, but other people with uh, majority ownership positions uh, have a different footing to what we have. So we've uh, engaged in discussions with uh, some of our indigenous partners and uh, told them that we are a willing buyer. And uh, we've had some very positive feedback that uh, they understand uh, why we would want to be a majority owner. And uh, there are some mechanisms that we're chatting about to, to be able to enable us to be a, a bigger shareholder in, in the blanket mine. What is very important, though, although the legislation says that gold miners can own 100%, our intention is not to own 100%. We still believe it's very, very important to have a participation of your staff, which we have 10% ownership held by our staff, and by the local community, who also own 10%. And uh, we are not engaged in discussions with them, and we have got no intention of uh, actually talking to them about changing ownership. We think it's really important to have local partners. And um, so we'll talk to the other partners and see if we can strike a deal and become a bigger shareholder in Blanket. So you could end up, you've got 49-ish percent at the moment, you, with the other 20% accounted for, you could have as much as, you'd be prepared to buy as much as eight, an 80% interest, buy up to an 80% yep. interest. Where do you think you might fall within that range? I suppose if one were to split the difference, you'd say 65%. But is that sort of what's going on? Or are you just seeing 51? That well, way? one party owns 16% and the other party owns 15%. Right, so you could buy one <laughs> or you could buy two. It's, Correct, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, the, so we probably will end up roughly around that figure of 65, 66 percent. Yeah, 49, 65, 80. It's mm. somewhere between there. Between and, the, uh, the, just, um, you did have, the, there was a plan for Blanket to have a rights issue, and that was one of the mechanisms by which you might have increased your ownership. Is that still going ahead? I understand it might not be. Uh, it's, it's not going ahead anymore, Charlie, for, for the simple reason that we don't need the money. And uh, the reason we don't need the money is, uh, you've seen from the results, the cash generation from the business can, can uh, sustain its capital investment program quite, uh, quite easily. We have also benefited from a, an improved export credit incentive, which the government recently increased from 2.5% to 10%. I think we discussed that on a previous show, uh, which is quite a substantial increase in uh, or effective reduction in the royalty rate uh, for, for the business. And that will mean that we will have sufficient cap cash generation from Blanket to sustain the central shaft investment. As Steve said, we spent $5 million last quarter um, to sustain that investment for the year and to sustain an exploration program, uh, which, which we've highlighted. So, so the rights issue is no longer necessary, and that's the reason it's been uh, discontinued. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. That was Morris Mason, the Head of Corporate Development and Investor Relations at Caledonia Mining, joined by his Chief Executive, Steve Curtis. As I say, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, but join me, Charlie Gibson, and next week we'll be looking for more such mining opportunities for you on The Mining Show, brought to you by Blytheway, as I say, Caledonia Mining, up to £7 from £6 uh, last month and from, well, 4 or £5 uh, six or so months ago. So, uh, as I always say, as the Americans say, you do the math. Um, I will look forward to seeing you next week, and uh, until then, uh, from us, you have a very capital day.